Hello YouTubers, this is Anubifier. If you're here for the free fly that begins on the 18th, welcome. Create an account using the code, and then I suggest finding an org who can take you through getting used to Star Citizen. All of that is in the description. The developers are starting to speak more about Jumptown 2, and whether you're a veteran of the franchise or a new player, I wanted to go through the importance, background, and implications. So sit back and relax, let me try to unpack this delicate subject in great detail, give you some backstory, and of course it goes without saying that this type of video works best when you the viewer comment your comments in the comments. It's up to you to spread the video to generate the conversation in the Discord or Gilded. Let's begin. The subject is Jumptown. Jumptown is nothing more than a location on Yila. It's super easy to find now, and all of the fuss began as a simple bug that resulted in several months of some of the best gameplay that we've ever seen in Star Citizen. In a huge open universe, anything that brings two opposing sides together constantly is good. This will result in gameplay and we desperately need it. The player who wants something versus the player who wants to prevent that player from getting it. You have to outsmart the other to come up with the best way to beat them. This expanded to teams working together and expanded beyond the solo player on player. The developers have worked on Xenothreat and Ninetales Lockdown. These are triggered on a schedule and players are alerted and asked to participate. Jumptown wasn't triggered at all. There was a real unknown and it was very simple. You never knew what you might find at Jumptown. So it's important to keep things simple because Jumptown 2 doesn't need to be complicated to be good. The most basic explanation is that Jumptown is a drug lab in a remote outpost. There was an imbalance in the value of some of the illegal commodities there. They were noticed and eventually commonly known by the players. You could run cargo from A to B in a legal manner and grind, but making one successful run below the radar in and out of Jumptown would make an evening's worth of profit in less than an hour. All players knew the risk going there and the temptation was so strong that usually completely law-abiding citizens were also willing to take the risk and go. Players went to Jumptown to move cargo, players went to Jumptown to stop them, and players went to Jumptown to kill the player killers who wanted to prevent the others from moving the cargo. Something for everyone, like it's so good. You never really knew what whoever wanted to do, so you really needed to be ready for everything. It was tense. These next comments I'm about to make always become spicy topics within the community which may have had a wide range of expectations when they backed and when they play. There are those who don't want anything to do with combat or risk. Those may wish Star Citizen to be nothing more than Euro Truck Simulator clone in space and with the ability to explore trade, take it all in, never bothered by others. There are those who wish to do bounty, and we know that Chris will deliver on this required mechanic because it's been a staple since the beginning. There are entire PMCs who escort legal operations of all shapes and sizes, basically offering a deterrent against killers and pirates. There are pirates with piracy game mechanics that Chris is also including. And then there are the killers, which is a legitimate gameplay in Star Citizen universe. It goes down from there into the realm of griefing, stream sniping, and trolling. A PKer or player killer is a player who kills regardless of how the other player is equipped, able to defend, expecting PvP, or even if they're interested in PvP. They will first announce their intent with guns. Wrong place, wrong person, wrong time. It can be seen as unsportsmanlike to some, or just part of the game that we were provided. Some players simply don't care about honor in a video game, especially in a universe without a suitable consequence mechanism. Some people just want to see the world burn and identify flaws in the game systems. Despite many finding the practice of killing in what is generally known as non-consensual PvP, if the game provides it or adds mechanics to support it, then it's actually part of the game. And here we go. Perhaps rather than being upset at the players for doing the killing, invest some time also in being critical of the current game mechanics. The very good thing about places like Jumptown, Grimhex, SBK, more recently Port Olisar, is that you know what you're getting yourself into when you go there. This is a constant age-old debate, and CIG's been making progress to address it through law, bounty, security, time sinks, and money sinks. Once Star Citizen is more developed in the future releases such as Pyro, Perhaps the idea of non-consensual PvP won't be a thing anymore. Patrolled areas are lawful and carry a large consequence resulting in a fine or a time sink such as prison or being hunted. This won't prevent all killing in those areas, but at least the penalty will be such an inconvenience that it might be seen as rare. So when a player decides to venture out from what are considered to be high security zones or high sec, then that is consent to engage in PvP. Your mere presence in that space, prepared or not, is your consent. Higher and more lucrative ventures will purposefully be placed in these areas that are less patrolled. 
Pirates and PKers will be searching for poorly defended targets, either to shake them down for cargo, money, or both. Fail to comply and they may just take what they want. This is where the great planning and choice of route, size, composition of escort, or even carrying a smaller total cargo reduces their interest in you. So that it might be reckless to consider taking a Hall E into Pyro unless you plan to bring a large fleet to defend it. Perhaps there's a better margin in planning several small runs on a very specific cargo in a very agile, defendable ship with a light escort. This is all great gameplay potential, something we desperately need, and hopefully why we're all here to begin with, on either side of the law. With that, I don't actually believe that there'll be much gameplay for those who wish to flat out insist on avoiding combat. All ships have guns by design, even the silly bikes and speeders, so it's pretty clear to me what I can expect. Chris has been vague about deadlines and features, but he's been solid since the start that Star Citizen will have something for all player types. You may just have to go out and get it though. So what would I like to see for the framework for Jumptown 2? To be honest, not very much more than what we already have. It should not need to be a triggered event, just like before, it can just be a persistent thing. It can be as simple as a location or a set of locations with a commodity that is very lucrative and like before, the rest will just happen naturally. It might be nice to find some way to put a payout on both sides, but to be honest, I don't think that really matters. If you watch any streamer who does PvP, they just enjoy the gameplay through the challenge that you get by playing against another player instead of a bot. So that brings us to the end. How would you like to see Jumptown 2 be added to the verse? Should it be big and deliberate like the more recent events, or do you think it would be better, smaller like the original? Thank you very much for spending your time with me. I've really enjoyed getting back into playing Star Citizen, both the good and the bad, and I have a couple of new topics in the works for you. Please stay tuned for that, and thank you for your support by watching the videos. Fly safe, and I'll see you in the verse.